Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the Milton Rogers Museum and our 11th annual Taos Pueblo Artist Show and Sale. <laughs> uh, TPAWS is the acronym. And uh, we're pleased to present um, my mom, Juanita Marcus Turley, who is one of the um, elders who still has the capacity to get around and visit. And she imparts her memories every day at home with us. So we thought it would, not, would be nice. And she, I asked her if she needed any cue cards or anything. She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just, on my introduction, I also want you to know that um, she was born to, when, um, to Manuelita Lucero, who married mm -hmm. Ben Marcus. And in the order of the children that survive um, into from childbirth to becoming a health, there is uh, there was an order with her oldest sister Marie, and then uh, Lupita, and then Frank, then Jose, Jose or Joseph, whichever you want to call him, and then my mom, Celestina, and then Joe David. And they also have, uh, she couldn't remember if there was four or five siblings that were lost either in childbirth or really young. There, there were seven that were lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, thank you. And my younger sister's here on the side too. But my mom's going to share whatever memories are just rich with her right now about growing up at Taos Pueblo. And in case she says something in Tila, I'm just here to translate for her and um, um, if you ask questions, I have to help her understand the question. Okay, Kat. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm never ready. <laughs> oh, you're ready, Kat. <laughs> are we, are we, can like, can like, you, know, you can sit down. Okay. <laughs> my brother. Okay, good. Well, nice to see all of you. But uh, I knew Millicent. We used to pretend we were her when we were growing up. And we would we would cry lipstick <laughs> and put lots of flour on our face for powder. We would imitate Millicent. She would visit the pub because she was with the Swaso family. And they would sit inside the village. And we would walk right by her and she would say, hello, girls. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she's not the only one that we knew. We knew a lot of tourists from all over the United States. And I was a tourist guide since I was nine years old. And I learned how to, to make a fan club. And I used to write hundreds of letters to all my, my fan club. And uh, the postman knew that my dad worked downtown, but the postman downtown used to stamp them free. Yay! <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is good to. Uh, I'm glad my daughter invited me here and my great granddaughter right there. And I'm a great great grandma, so I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> and January, our first year, like Elvis Presley and I are the same age. So I got to meet Elvis in, in uh, Santa Fe when he came for a concert and uh, then went to visit his home in Memphis and we got to see him over there. Of course, our life is, was surrounded by my dad being in the movies a lot and he was a famous dancer, um, the war dance and they traveled so many places. People used to come and visit us at our house. So we have a lot of friends from all over the United States because of my dad's name, Ben Marcus. And of course, my mom too was, was friendly, but she got kind of tired. And um, anyway, I went to the Taos Day School and finished um, eighth grade and I was editor-in-chief for a newspaper at the day school and I used to go room to room to get my news and I loved it and um, 
then I had to teach the younger group how to write um, newspapers. And um, my teachers were all white teachers except one lady from Oklahoma who was married inside the village. But um, they were all good teachers. And uh, the home math teacher was Mrs. Rayner. She was married to Tony. And of course, she was a, a good home math teacher. And um, I think our playhouses were in the barn. We didn't have inside the village, but we used to play in the barn. And um, we used to sneak all kinds of tortillas and candy from my mom and auntie's house so because we didn't have money to go buy snacks you know but, um, and we um went away to boarding school and i picked saint catherine's and um, my other brothers and sisters all went to the indian school santa fe indian school but um, the reason I didn't go there was because they had to go to town every day and then they, had, they didn't have money and they used to get in trouble. <laughs> and, uh, they would try to take from them. So, uh, so I didn't have to go and buy any, anything at St. Catherine's because the sisters had a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> and of course Monsignor Bradley was my friend too so he used to invite me and my the three of my friends to go to his apartment because him, him being an Irishman too he used to have all kinds of uh, sweet snacks but, um, I really enjoyed going to the day school though I think those were the best years of my eight, uh, nine years and uh, it was really sad to leave home. Of course, we came home for summer, but I, I really missed the small school. And the teachers were the best teachers we had. I remember all of them too. Yet, yeah, the shop teacher, Mr. Concha, taught us all about the tools and how to um, make use of your tools, how to take care of them. And, um, he would speak to us in our language and also in English. So we learned all the names both ways. And uh, the funny thing about his nails, we call the Spanish people the nail people. So <laughs> they used to say, how oh, come we well, got to uh, talk to the nail people? <laughs> but we didn't hate them, it was the name because that's the way the Explorers came with their metal uh, mask and metal uniform, so that's why they our people named them the nail people. And um, I thought that was nice. <laughs> and uh, so we talk, we asked the teachers, the some of our Spanish neighbors, well, how do you call us? They said, Oh, we call you the earth people. Mm -hmm. Earth earth from the ground. Yay! <laughs> yeah. but, um, my mom and dad were both very special people, and they uh, had so many friends, and that that's how we learned how how to associate with other people from all over the United States. Then my dad became a Hollywood actor, so we, those people would come and visit us too. And to us, they were like almost like family because we got used to seeing them. And uh, my dad would say his people were very good to us in a movie. They fed us and they kept us in their homes. So we're, uh, you have to be good to them when, he, when they see you. So what else was there we're supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. What else did you say? Um, he hope so. If I'm at Metpa, you have called Satuba, quite of my Metpa. Oh, yeah. Well, we are, um, our way to get to the town town was a wagon and horses. We didn't have cars, there were no taxi cabs. <laughs> but uh, as when we grew up, after we were 
uh, high school, they finally had a taxi cab. And what was the other one? Wurlitzer. Oh, yeah, for an hour for Mrs. Wurlitzer. She had a beautiful house. And um, it wasn't dirty. And all I did was go to her kitchen and maybe I would wash one coffee cup and one spoon. And uh, I said, why don't you dirty your dishes? And I came to wash. She said, oh, well, the maid did, but you can get in, you can get in there and you get your own snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so I would eat out of her house, but she was a very wonderful person. And now my, uh, my aunt, my dad's sister's husband used to work, Manuel Rain, I used to work in there too. So he and I would make sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, how, see you, oh, Dorothy Brett. What? Dorothy Brett. Remember when you guys used to play Dorothy Brett? Hello, hello. <laughs> Dorothy Brett, when you guys used to do. Oh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> She was with the Swaso family up at the village. And we used to imitate her too, because she couldn't hear either. Now we all play somebody from downtown. <laughs> we used to imitate a lot of people that we got uh, close to. And they didn't mind, they were real proud. And uh, of course with my dad, he had a famous name because he's been a war dancer and a movie star. In other words, they would all come to our house. And they would, um, uh, we would imitate them too. And uh, of course, it didn't hurt us. It made us more open to to go leave home, and we won't be afraid to be home and um, pre pretend that those people were still guiding us. But they were all non-Indian people, and they were very, very good to us. About. How about the um, Hershey's people, that bag of Hershey's purse that you found on the middle bridge? He saw what a people on the crab at the moon, and I told me he had the Hershey's seal and a crab at the way. The kind of tattoo. Seal Hershey's seal crab at the motto on the saw what. Yeah, tell you found it. And then from that point on, she used to guys give you guys Hershey's for Christmas. You mean boxes of Hershey's? The, the money? The, yeah, because you found that money. And then after that, you gave her back the money that you found. And then she would send you the family boxes of Hershey's. Oh, yeah. Remember? Uh, yeah, well, uh, everybody left some kind of their belongings at the village. So one was a lot of money in a bag. So um, we took it to my mom and we were counting the money. And uh, uh, they came and later they, the governor and then downtown mayor announced it that that money was found by the kids at the Pueblo. So they um, divided that money to us, not all of it, but some of it. And it was a lot, it was a big bag like that. And uh, I don't remember where. I think they were from uh, New York. <laughs> yeah. 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 How about um, but but come can he live now? Papered day or no? Yeah, na can I feel it papered na? What day or no? Oh yeah, we didn't have electricity until just it's, it's very recent. So we grew up with um kerosene lamps. And um, that was okay because that, well, we had to do our homework before the kerosene lamps went down. <laughs> and uh, but I wrote a lot of fan mail letters. So my mom used to say, "Now you have to light a candle if you're going to finish your letters." So I had to finish them with a candle light. Get water. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then get in water from the stream, that was an everyday responsibility. But of course, me and my girlfriends, we used to visit by the water instead of getting water. And my mom would holler and we would just wave at her. <laughs> but, um, but they were very strict with us. We weren't allowed to date boys. 
but we go up to the east forest and sleep. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was fun though, but the boys didn't really know what to do either. <laughs> so until we finished the day school, we finally realized, hey, we were so stupid. <laughs> but it was in our fault, you know, the parents were trying to teach us to be um, strong and, and at least when they told us what to do, what not to do, we listened to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions that might help for some for their memory? Animals, the animals you fed, like Kuti, Becca Mamek. Oh, yeah. Being a whole fish member, I had my chickens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, we got eggs from them. And later, uh, if somebody was hungry at home, we would kill one or two chickens and roast them in the stove and then feed the family that were in need of food. But that 4 age was the best thing because we could travel other other schools. And uh, we'd go up to Arroyo Seco and uh, up to San Luis, Colorado and uh, ranchos and anywhere where there were animals we were allowed to visit and uh, or stay overnight if some of them like during the flu season if they weren't at work they used to hire one or two of us to go and feed their families <laughs> yeah um, um, the the i Oh, yeah. So oh, another duty we have was to help the older people with whatever needs there were, either to regard their household need or if the man needed wood, if they didn't have a horse and wagon. We, our family would um, lend them the wagon or the horses and they would go get the wood. And then the rest of us, we would go to each house too to see if they did housekeeping. And, uh, you know, we never stole. They would leave jewelry and they would leave money on, the, on purpose to see, testing us, but we never stole. And so they were so proud of us and they would tell our parents, we want your children to come clean our house because they, they, they're very good, they don't uh, steal from us. And um, want, so at least we were experienced in that way to be trusted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, our family were pretty well-known dancers in the Pawa way. So since my dad had been to Hollywood to make movies, we had other visitors come from all over the United States and the foreign countries. And we used to dance for them to uh, entertain them instead of them having to go to town. But we did a lot of dancing for so many people. I can't remember how many people we danced for, but we enjoyed it. And my Uncle John and uh, Manuel Lujan and Mr. Cordova and my godfather, Sam, they used to come and drum for us. And um, uh, that's how we were able to, to um, uh, be strong to go out of the, the Pueblo so we could uh, get used to the big city because we already met all these new people. What's your dad's favorite movie that he was in? What was that? That's his favorite movie that he was in. Six Flags? Oh, the big one was Two Flags West. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. He was a good actor. Boy, he was really a really handsome man. Yeah. Nobody ever believed his age, and they still don't believe her age. Oh, the good genes. Um, any other questions? Um, Ka, how about Dashi? The outfit that he hunted. Talk about how Dashi was a hunter and all the moccasins and and so too then that would buy me for it. Oh yeah. Uh, how about how about my mother? My mother, 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 my they killed a buck or even an elk. They used to tend the hides and make them to be ready into buckskin. So we, uh, the women needed their big white boots. They used to use the, the good buckskin that my dad had fixed. So our family was always oh. busy. Yeah. 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 I was saying everywhere he went, women fell in love with him. Yeah. And then there's somebody showing up to the Pueblo and grandma would be like, oh, okay. Yeah, would you like something to eat? <laughs> you know, and you but, can see the likeness yeah. of my mom and mom. And then this is him running with the horse. It's so cool. You can find it on YouTube, but then he is like running full throttle. Huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Very Yeah, so. <laughs> how, uh, how about yet? Yeah, um, no, in the hospital, he loved all my men. He, he, he cut, he said, could tell um, oh, uh, but, 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 the Holy Cross Hospital was one of the bigger hospitals developed so our people could use it instead of always traveling to Santa Fe or Albuquerque. So we're very thankful that the Taos County gave their own um, ideas and monies. Of course, the government helped to make the, the Holy Cross because they needed all the, the professional uh, equipment in there, so we were lucky that the Holy Cross helped us out. I have a, I, I, a tour guide on hand. Mm -hmm. I, I, a tour guide, Yemen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just like to brag about myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the first uh, tour guide lady girl, <laughs> and because my dad's name was because he was a Hollywood star. Huh. So they would come to see and ask for me. So there I would go and uh, talk to almost 10 or 12 people each, each guy during the day and during the week. I don't remember how many people I talked to, but uh, my dad's name was very famous, Ben, Ben Marcus. I Oh. We never heard of saving money in the bank for all the tips. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, we, I had a big family. I had brothers and sisters and cousins. So we would use my tour guide money tips to help buy groceries or if they needed school clothing, they would go ask my mom, I need shoes for my son or, or I need uh, Whatever they had, they had a list and my dad would check it up. I'll buy this, I'll buy that. So with my tip money, I used to help uh, support the, the children. 
my cousins, and even though they were older than me. What was your favorite season as far as seasons, like winter, spring? But I meant to win summer, fall, winter. What time of the year did you like best? Mm. I think the best time I like of the weather was the springtime because then you know that you, you uh, survived the cold. So the spring was very nice and we would wait for the plum trees to show their white little flowers and we would go over there and pick just a handful and make us make a cool egg from there and it was sweet and don't do that. <laughs> but um, we did all that. We would save the juice to take to, to, to boarding school with us. My dad would make put it in an ice tray and take it off to the day school to freeze the frozen uh, flower ice ice cubes. And when it was time for us to go to school, we used to take them and down to Santa Fe and put them down there. We did a lot of these natural ways. We were raised so naturally. You know, it was hard to get used to the, what we say, the white man food. <laughs> But uh, of course we had to to eat at the school. At St. Catherine's, the sisters were very good because they had cooked, cooked food for so many years of uh, being around Indian people that they could feed us good food that we were used to the taste. And they didn't like chili. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we got used to that. Um, we would make our own chili and just warm it in the cook's kitchen. And she would allow us, the sister said, sister would say, go ahead, warm your chili, but don't give it to the rest of the sisters because they don't like chili. I have a graduate. Oh, yeah, one of my hardest. Time was learning Spanish in Spanish class. I just failed every time, every test. And I tried, I tried to understand the language, but I just could not get it. And uh, I had to go talk to, to um, my, my mom and dad's friends in Taos to see if they could help me out to, to help me pass for my last test. And they said, well, the Marcus family have always provided for us when our crops fail. Their family come over and help put the seed for us. So you better pass her. So they helped me to, to pass me. With, <laughs> and you know, that was true. It was all the true things that they had, they had to teach the other people. Just because the, the crops failed, they would know what to do because the, the county would not provide. So our family went to, to help out with the crop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the fun of healing? Healing a hot man for fun. Healing a hot man for fun. A fun. A fun. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I think hide and seek was our favorite because the village was still big from north and south and the barns. And uh, we would have a team and those of that hide the longest, we, we would, uh, the, the ones that didn't have a big number that didn't hide too long, they had to give us snacks. <laughs> We always had something to, to uh, make them think. But um, hide and seek and uh, swimming in the summertime, I think that was our favorite time because we had all that stream going through the, not the village, but west of us and in the pasture. We'd go by the buffalo pasture 
and we will go on the land. We will look at the buffalo right above us, and we will go. That will go like that. Oh, I don't. And uh, but we didn't get hurt. Uh, we used to take the grass from the uh, pasture from the stream, and they had nice roots. We used to wash those off and peel them just like a potato, and we used to eat those. And uh, no, no, it didn't hurt us. But I, I think we did a lot to survive by nature. Yeah. Do you remember any of the, your mother's story or the fairy tale story that she was saying for? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if it's appropriate because it's not the right season. The wind came. Most of the tales were told in winter time. And so, and that encourages the snow, right? Yeah. He from one of them, I found that by Utka, Utka, Utka. Yeah, well, we play so many games, but our favorite la ladies and girls game was the leaf ball. We would get the the little the leaf about this long with the leaves on, tie them in the middle, make them like this, like this. Yeah. And then we would throw at each other, practice throwing them to each other. And the boys would try to get them wrong. And boy, that was fun. <laughs> if they put it, they had to put it inside of them and we'd go run after them and get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> So, but that leaf game lasted a long time, and then by the time the summer was over, if we had the leaf balls left, we used to um, wet them down with water and wrap them in newspaper and put them away for the, for the winter time. We weren't allowed to play for the winter time, but quiet season was really hard because we couldn't sing, we couldn't shout, and so we did was... Uh, uh, we used to get down on the outside the house and draw pictures of somebody's house and we would try to guess, guess whose house this is. <laughs> Sometimes we would put things that weren't there. <laughs> and one of my girlfriends was real nasty. She used to put the man and woman together. <laughs> and we would say, you're not supposed to show that. <laughs> well, I've seen it, that's why. <laughs> we, were re we were at least exposed to those ways, even though they were written down on the ground. You know, at least we were able to express ourselves. But my mom would get real upset when she found out we were, somebody was drawing a man and woman <laughs> In bed. <laughs> <laughs> when I do it, I give fruit and then then yeah, the kinata is. Oh, but um, yet yet a kill not I mama tea a mepa Yeah, when the village still has those wood. <laughs> Um, she built to put uh, put wood on top. We used to have four posts, like about this much space, just a post. And we would always pick a, a post, and someone in the middle would stand there, and we would try to reach one thing, and then try to grab the one standing in the middle, try to get one. Then you'd have to go and do it yourself. Now we did a lot of that, like but that. that kept us strong yeah. with our running and able to be stable when you're running, especially from the boys. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we had a lot of ladders at the Pueblo. We climbed ladders upstairs, many of the houses. Uh, even the five-story building of north and south, they had ladders, and they weren't. Uh, nobody was. The kids weren't allowed to to play on them. They were very sacred ladders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're doing a great job, Mom. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I, I wish. Uh, not allowed. Mm -hmm. What about going? 
And my brothers had made sleds that the days go out of wood. So they used to go uh, way on the other side, west side of the, our mountains near um, uh, Taos Canyon, because there's no good, no Indians live on that side. They used to go walk all the way with their sleds, wooden sleds, and they were big. And they used to go and sled down set that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, I'm glad that we were able to to entertain ourselves, but um, we we got along very well with our playmates. Uh, not, not just because they were cousins, but we were we were all good to each other. And um, I think the only fights we had were um, argument was that some of the the their dads used to drink a lot, so we used to make fun of them how they would act when they're drunk <laughs> yeah um um he lived uh for the luna urban and he lived oh yeah well we picked the choke choke and the plums from the mountains both sides the north and south had plenty of it and um, we didn't have to worry about going to town to buy fresh. We could just boil them in the stove to make them come out again. And the, the plums, some were dried whole, but the other ones, we used to take the seeds out and those, we used to dry those without the seeds. And then we used to make pies from them. They were the best pies in the world. <laughs> And um, I'm getting a sore now. <laughs> Wishing sore. <laughs> oh, spinach? Yeah. All the things. Spinach? Well, I think what we did with this was always, uh, we didn't have refrigeration, so all of our vegetables was like mushrooms and um, spinach and another um i don't know how celery to, and, yeah. and watercress yeah yeah and we used to dry those mm. and uh, save them in paper bags because we didn't have plastic plastic came way late and after refrigeration came too late too then it seems that our people lost how to process the natural way because then the tongue was available so those ways we can show our children and grandchildren anymore, mm -hmm. you know, because then the stores are providing in it, which is very sad. Well, so don't buy it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, when we had our cable doing, me and my cousin, two cousins and my sister, and I, my sister and I used to, be the one that made the big jokes. Or well, if we didn't do it, we, the, even the cavemen would not survive but because we made them laugh. We teased them that they really appreciated us when we would um, tell our silly jokes. <laughs> oh, and that's then. But oh, who Oh, and then. Oh, gathering between your nuts. Yeah. Oh, that was so fun. But we had to wear knee, knee uh, mats. Yeah, so we were well, oh, uh, my dad's heavy socks to put around us. Because uh, you had to crawl underneath the pinyon tree. 
and gather those one at a time. <laughs> and uh, so sometimes the downtown people will come and try to buy. So if you had a, a bucket about that big full, we used to sell that for $25. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, wow. And they would buy until they learned how to pick pinions. <laughs> when he 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 live on two women granary town. He all my yeah no we are keep for it. No, it was just the granary was for the men who used to process their wheat and oats on the machine. But after they went out of style, then we had a grocery store, a small grocery store right there on the proper uh, proper grounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we bought kerosene because we had kerosene lamps. And of course, with the same kerosene, you had to start your fire in the wood stove. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cheat. That's <laughs> 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 Oh, well, during, he didn't have a horse and wagon, my dad, until uh, he used to borrow from the war chief to bring wood from the mountains. And finally, his brother, his older brother, and then went to the pasture to buy somebody's horses. They told the war chief, we're buying these horses because we needed to go buy wood, to, to pick wood up in the mountains. We keep borrowing the wagons and the horses and we like to um, get these horses, maybe put our name down and we can pay the people who are selling or if not selling, we'll buy them. So that's how we were able to buy the, the horses, my, my uh, dad and his brother. And then they made their own wagon, except the wheels were already available. And somebody had donated that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when we grew up, um, we, of course, we, being uh, little kids, we, grew up without shoes. Well, we had moccasins, but we used to lose them in the, in the, by the ditch playing in the water. So my mom and dad would get so mad at us. <laughs> so finally, um, we had to, they taught us how to work, type the moccasins together, put them inside of you so you can walk in the water. Yeah, yeah but we wore moccasins even to the day school until we were in the sixth grade, and then later we we would um, they would give us government shoes, which lasted us forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Oh, how does your dad get to Hollywood? To Hollywood? Yeah. Um. He was that he was they were dancers. So when people were wanting to do film and they asked for dancers at the Pueblo, my family being dancers, then well we can dance, you can ride horses, whatever you need. So that's how there was a big production when we were kids and it was called uh, In Search of the Gods. And they they filmed and they it was so far out to see the end product because they they situated all these people on the two main homes with torches and stuff. Yeah. And supposedly the they were looking for a lost talisman that was going to tell the secrets of the universe or something. And anyway, so there's this scene with our grandfather and it's supposed to be a peyote ceremony and they're sitting there and he told us, oh, I don't know what they were doing. They kept passing around this bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because um, but when when he was farming and they would perform in between crops. Ka, 
But can I tell you, uh, cut the mark. Um, you call a mac. Um, you hear him on so on what a mac. It all met for it in a top by a map for it. Who I had. But you call panic. Oh, you call panic. It all met for Yet you comment but oh. Well, you call a map Huh, or you call a map Huh, who you know, it, it all map for it, it palga. Family member, to call that Oh, I say it all, yeah, man. Um, in a go walk, who you call a map. But can I tell me, yeah, man? I, I don't remember that. So part of the, there, there are such performers and there were farmers. And when they were farming, then they would be finished with the crop and waiting for the next crop. So they would dance at the plaza of whatever town they were at. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And that's so they had a reputation of, you know, not only being farmers and hunters, but they were dancers. And so they were just constantly to make money that they couldn't just sit there and wait for a crop to go. They'd have to perform for people to make, to justify waiting for the next crop. But my mom, I don't wish to remember that. Yes. But talk about her garden. Ka, 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 uh, anyways, and then the other one is your children. Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I was talking raised. about being raised, and she's like, "No, you mean what I grew." Up. I was like, "Yeah, so we were both." Well, after my dad had raised us, I mean, he 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 always had a crop every year, but by the time we're in we're in a boys' club at the day, day school then. We, we practiced uh, and learned how to plant our own crops. So we had fun. We had all the vegetables for 4 H. And then the downtown 4 H leader would come and check it out. And then we would get prices like first, second, third, and fourth place to see how well the, our gardens were growing. And then we would. Uh, get ribbons and I had about 12 of those ribbons. I don't know what happened to them, <laughs> but um, I always kept them with me at home. Yeah, we had three gardens, one at the, where, uh, where the Esther and them live and at the summer house and over at the south side that other plant were uh, and an eater's place. Mm -hmm. So I had three places and we didn't have cars. We used to walk over. Try that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what was your nickname? Um, I don't remember. Bam -bam. No, that was my papa. Bam -bam was I mean, well, um, no, um, he called the um the other nickname book. So what was it? Because you knew all the books. Come on. Oh, huh? Huh? What the uh um the fight and uh he 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 oh my map boy. Facebook. Hmm. Oh my oh my man, I'm not the papa in a while. Facebook. Ah. Yeah, the nickname. I have plenty of nicknames because I was probably one of the most. PCS, um, young person growing up, even though I had older brothers and sisters, but because I was in the middle, I had to um, do things my way. So my, I had nicknamed Facebook. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but I was proud of it. At least it wasn't dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Facebook came out, she's like, that's my name. <laughs>
Oh yeah, because I was always either reading the paper or reading mail or grabbing anything. I see even a, um, a box that had brochures in it. They're really nice to read it. So that's why they named me Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think a walk a moment as all ya eat as an adult. He abandoned. Oh. Uh, when I was probably, in, I noticed what my mom and dad were doing to raise us. And one of my uh, favorite thing to to talk about was I want to be become very rich so I can take care of the children instead of always waiting for someone to pay me. That was one of my big dreams and it came true. Yeah. Anything else? There's somebody online that wants to know if the Pueblo is going to open April 1st. I believe it is. Yeah, that's what we, the last we heard is that the Pueblo will open April 1st. And, and before we close the program, I'm inclined to, to acknowledge that the land that the museum is on is an acknowledge, a land acknowledgement statement that we're on the lands of our ancestral families of, of the Taos Pueblo. And we've been here since time immemorial. And so that's the uh, proper thing to do. And I should have done that in the beginning, but there's more people here now too, so it's probably, probably fitting. And um, we're very happy to have our mother with us. We're very fortunate to have her. And this is the first time we've done something like this. There's much interest in um, people talking to her, maybe more in the future. And it's, it's breaking the ice and it gives her something to look forward to. And um, she has, um, raised three daughters, my older sister, Mary Esther Winters. I'm in the middle, and then there's my younger sister, Patricia. And so um, she did a wonderful job raising us as a single mother, and um, she taught us how to be strong with it. We don't have a second for her. If you want to give her a donation, that's fine. If not, that's okay. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, well, well, it's good to visit with you, at least was part of your visit here. And um, just enjoy yourself. And, uh, if you have any questions, you can either ask Pat or Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. We're lucky that she lived that home and we have her great granddaughter living there with us too. And so the baby is having Tiwa. And my mom's become an animated jukebox that we grew up with. And and baby's learning the songs and dance and she'll start a song and we're like, okay, yeah, let's get away. So thank you for joining.